Hello everyone, Alistair Gold here, recording this very late at night, at gone two in the morning, because I just wanted to give you a little update. Do you know what? I said in the last video, I said at the moment nothing's close, but who knows? By the time this video finally uploads, maybe something will have happened. And of course, in true Tottenham style, it has. Hey, it's good news. It's good news. So in the hours since I said that, Spurs have made a breakthrough. And it's with Jed Spence, um, which is fantastic news. And what it is, is they are very close to getting that deal done. There's been a real breakthrough this afternoon, UK time, tonight, Korea time. Um, and it's close enough that the medical... Should be done within the next 48 hours or expected to, to be begun in the next 48 hours, potentially even as early as tomorrow um, because the two clubs have finally come to an agreement on young Jed Spence. Which means Tottenham Hotspur will have done six transfers before even playing, well, it'll be there potentially before playing their second pre-season game, maybe their third, depends on when they finally tie it all up. Obviously, even if it were to be done in the next 24 hours, it would be too late to get him out here to Korea. He would then be uh, waiting at Hotspur Way, and obviously he'll have to go through all the fitness stuff that everyone else has been going through. But six signings, it's ridiculous. And do you know what? I was thinking about it, the price. We don't know entirely exactly what the price is yet. Um, I know Spurs were looking more around the 15 million range. Obviously, Middlesbrough report suggested they were looking for more like 20. Um... But even at that price, if you think about what they've got done, what, let's say roughly 100 million on the five done so far, you know, it's probably including signing on fees and things like that. If Jed Spence were another 15, that's 115 million on six transfers, which is actually very good in terms of kind of what they've got out of that. And then really, if you think about sales, the 150 million they had, uh, Champions League revenue, little things like that. It's only me speculating, but it seems like there's a fair bit of money there yet to spend on someone else. I wonder whether they go for that kind of a central attacking midfielder type. I do wonder that. And obviously, like I said before, still monitoring a potential striker option if there is one out there. Um, although Richarlison, as I said in the previous video, did play very well. Uh, well, he played well in a friendly, but he showed the ability to play as a natural, I think, a number nine um, or at least a, a makeshift number nine in a good way and hold up play. But let's talk about Jed Spence. So 21 years old, um, obviously breakthrough season last season. Um, he's only got two years left on his contract at Middlesbrough as well, which which clearly would affect his price as well. Um, I think it turns to, I think he actually shares a birthday with me. I've got a funny feeling he is also an August the 9th birthday as well. So he will turn 22 then. As I've said before, Fabio Paratici has gone and watched him live. Um, I think you remember him watching an FA Cup game. I have a feeling he went to watch him when they played Leicester, potentially. Because that's the thing. Um, obviously, he played a lot of championship games, but he has played three Premier, uh, sorry, three FA Cup matches against Premier League teams, taken on Arsenal, Leicester and Liverpool. And, you know, from all accounts, has done pretty well in all of those games. I think he was a man of the match in one of them. Scored in another. Uh, Liverpool game was a tough game, obviously, but I don't think he embarrassed himself. Also, I think it was 1-0, wasn't it? They only conceded one goal. Um, obviously scored... Uh, sorry, he played. I want to get the exact figure for you, because obviously big game, big season for Forrest on loan. Helped them get into the playoffs under Steve Cooper. Uh, 50 matches in all he played last season. Three goals and five assists. That's probably where he needs to improve. Uh, defensively, he, he's you know he's really getting stronger as well. A lot of people praising his defensive attributes last season, um, but mainly you know you look at him as a as a wing back, and I think that's the key thing for Spurs. They're looking for people that are natural in the positions that Conte wants them in, and I just wonder whether that means that Emerson Emerson Royale perhaps does have to head out the door. You know, he's not keen to go from all accounts, from what, what seems to be suggested. I think his agent has been making it very clear that he doesn't expect him to go. But you look at those options and you look at Matt Doherty and, um, you know, a guy who fits the wing-back role very well. Jed Spence clearly fits it very well, played it excellently for 
uh, Forest last season, the uh, championship, and Emerson Royale doesn't really fit that bill. He doesn't quite tick all the boxes when it comes to wing back. He is very much a traditional fullback, can defend very well, but in an attacking sense, probably isn't going to give you what you're after in those attacking areas. And yeah, Jed Spence will. I'm still trying to get my head around the fact that potentially six signings could be made within. You know, we're not even, what are we, the 14th of July today? Uh, sorry, yeah, 14th of July for you. It's 15th of July for me because we've crossed over the time. As you can see, I'm absolutely knackered. You can probably see the reflection in the glass of my bed, which is, is waiting for me to go to bed. Tottenham do this to me. If it's not my holiday uh, or a day off, and now it appears that they'll do it at two in the morning. It was lucky that I was having a very late night meal. We were waiting for a couple of journalists to finish off some stories, so we ended up having to go out very late, and, uh, and one of them got lost. I'm not naming who, but someone got lost on the Korean subway, headed off in the wrong direction, so it made it a very, very, very late meal. Um, and yeah, I literally just got back as my phone started going mad with various messages from people telling me uh, that things had started to advance. It's just always the way, isn't it? You do a video um, saying nothing's happened because it hadn't happened at that point. Then, you know, a few hours later, this is the thing, the YouTube videos are taking about two, two and a half hours to upload at the moment, which is not good. It's my fault. I'm talking too long in them. That's the problem. When it's an hour, hour and ten thing, it takes an age. Um, so yeah, that took all that time to upload, but hey, I'm not going to grumble because it's another signing to be able to write about. It's another signing for us to talk about and watch in action, but potentially the Rangers game, maybe in Glasgow next Saturday, isn't it? Saturday afternoon. Um, uh, not this one coming because obviously that's Sevilla out here in, in Korea. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed if they could get it done, I'd really like them to get it done quickly. Um, <laughs> Because if they could accelerate it quite quickly and get it done, then I could ask Conte about it in his press conference tomorrow. Uh, with, he's with Hugo Lloris. It's 4pm uh, Korean time, which is 8am for you guys in the morning. So as you wake up or uh, heading off to work or something, I'll be doing updates at the press conference. Whereas I wonder if it's not done, I have a feeling Conte probably won't talk about it. Um, but if he does, I mean... Ultimately, I could still ask him on Saturday. If it gets done by then, I could ask him after the match. Uh, it'd be just nice to know how much of a say he had in this one. Like I say, I know Paratici watched him. And I know Paratici would have given this the green light. And you'd imagine Conte would as well. I think the key thing about it is it feels more like a normal Tottenham signing. You know, more of a young potential player and one for the future. Whereas obviously the bulk of the five that have happened so far feel like more kind of the now players, whereas this is very much a young, I suppose, English player type signing, which maybe Spurs were known for more in the past as well, I'd say, maybe less so than in recent years. But, you know, we know Spurs have got huge foreign player numbers. In the Euro in the Champions League, they've got 22, when they can only have 17. So having another homegrown player coming in the door is no bad thing whatsoever. And he is also an under-21 teammate of Ryan Sessegnon, Oliver Skip. So, you know... There's a nice link there. Um, it, will, it will settle in and um, he will have people he knows. It won't be a, a huge experience in that respect. The experience and the big jump will come in the fact that he's going to have to play in the Premier League. But uh, I think he's an exciting talent. You know, I've, a few people on social media I've seen have kind of knocking it down slightly, but I actually think there's a lot of potential in Jed Spence. I really do think he could be a very good player for Tottenham in, in the... In the future, he's got bags of potential. And that's why I say I wonder whether there's going to be backloaded stuff in this deal for, for Middlesbrough to profit down the line. Um, you know, like Jack Clark heading out the door, it was not a lot up front, but it was 10 million uh, potential add-ons. Um, and I wonder whether Middlesbrough could end up doing well if sometimes these things are like if he plays for England, if he uh, reads a certain amount of appearances in the Premier League, things like that. But um, yeah. We knew this one. I think the thing with this one, it was always just about finding that compromise with the value. I think that was always the key. Um, Spurs wanted him. He wanted Spurs. Middlesbrough expected the deal to go through. It was just a case of someone bending, I guess, and just someone compromising. And the moment that happened, which appears that it is this afternoon over there in the UK... The deal can get done, and I think don't think he's been playing a full part, or, or certainly hasn't been a full part in their pre-season and everything. So this way, hopefully, he's been keeping himself fit. He's going to have a shock when he comes to Tottenham and does these um, 
these drills. Hopefully Ryan Session has been saying to him, run, run a lot, because you're going to have to get very, very fit. Um, and hopefully that's what he's been doing, because otherwise it will be a huge shock for him when he arrives at Hotspur Way. But yeah, so the headline news, deal very close now. Hopefully should be done um, within the next 48 hours. His medical obviously will have to be completed with that time, potentially tomorrow if it gets through quick enough. And there you go, signing number six on the horizon for Tottenham Hotspur. What is this Tottenham Hotspur? This is not the Tottenham Hotspur we know. They are being, as Conte told me the other day in the press conference, when you've got a clear idea, you can get transfers done quickly. And that's exactly what they're doing. There can't be any excuses or complaints because this squad is going to be there and in place the bulk of it by the time the Premier League season starts on August the 6th. So, yeah, very exciting. Great news. Um, and I think he'll be a very good signing for Tottenham Hotspur. So, yeah. I'm knackered. <laughs> I'm absolutely knackered. This is the way Tottenham operate and what they do to me. Cruel torture. But there you go. It's all part of the fun of it. Um, I'm going to head off to bed now and... Uh, Hopefully this uploads a little bit quicker as it's only 11 minutes and you'll get this a little bit sooner than the huge wait it was. You'll see in the last video it was um, daylight outside and by the time it actually uploaded onto YouTube I was walking around in the dark. Um, so there you go. That's the funny way it works. But there you go. Anyway, back to the good news. Tottenham Hotspur closing in on the signing of Jed Spence. Finally, after all those many reports of advanced talks, uh, deals agreed... Finally, they are actually in advance talks, and it is about to happen, um, barring a disaster. And yes, I know they can happen at Tottenham, but looks like this one, all parties want it to happen, so it should go through within the next 48 hours, hopefully, um, certainly, certainly by the end of this weekend, and like I say, medical to come shortly. So there you go. Right, I'm going to head off to bed. Uh, as always, stay healthy, stay safe, look after yourselves, and I'll catch you later. <laughs> catch you later? I can't even say it, I'm so knackered. Good night, everyone. <laughs>